Hello and welcome to Traditional Chinese Medicine. My name is Christina Kapothanasis. I'm a Chinese medicine doctor and acupuncturist in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a graduate of the Shanghai University of Traditional Chinese Medicine, where my five years and year-long residency were conducted completely in Mandarin Chinese. My mission is to help people incorporate Chinese medicine into their daily lives to promote health and well-being. If you think somebody may be able to benefit from this video, please share with your friends and family. I thank you for all your comments because they really mean a lot to me, so I will try to respond to as many as I can. If you have interest, you can check out my Instagram at Chinese Medicine Hawaii, where I post what my and my family eat every day to help you inspire and encourage you to eat a little cleaner for yourself too. And I am working on a course that incorporates everything that I've ever told any of my patients over the last 10 years about food, dietary, and lifestyle changes that you can implement on your own. And as soon as the course comes out, I will put it in the comments in the description box below. For our case study today, I've actually seen her three or three times so far, and she is a patient with cancer. She is coming to make herself more comfortable as she undergoes chemotherapy treatments. And she was born in 1959, it is now 2021. Um, her breast cancer was diagnosed in 2018, but now it has metastasized to bones and liver. And her chemotherapy has caused side effects of um, in taking insulin for diabetes. Now she has diabetes and neuropathy, uh, mostly in her fingers. So she has to take painkillers for that. She also suffers from insomnia, high blood pressure, atrial fibrillation, high cholesterol. Um, her bowel movement, she goes every other day and she thinks the food does not taste good anymore. There's a bitter taste in the mouth and food, no foods taste like they used to. So, I thought I'd share with you today, focusing mostly on the improvement in her sleep. Sleep will be crucial for anyone's condition, but especially for a cancer patient. And I would just like to share with you the very fast improvement she had in her blood pressure, actually, and her sleep. And we'll wait to see how the rest of it goes I might not do this on a weekly basis like I have with my other case study, but I will pick um, times that I think are more interesting to share. So she already was sugar free, but she started on her diet and was quite good about implementing the no dairy right off the bat. And then the third, second or third time I got to see her was when she started adding the no wheat to the diet and she was slowly getting cleaner but she likes to eat out so we need to be creative I went through many options of how we can still be clever and eat out and be relatively clean um, so we we started with just the diet and then the second time I added the herbs and the magnesium lotion and she started incorporating green juices into her diet just this last time which was exciting after she started on the food the herbs and the acupuncture her blood pressure went down from 140 over 100 to 125 over 100 that's a significant drop in blood pressure because of the quality of her sleep i find that the the top number is more closely related to the stress the body is undergoing and sleep deprivation is an incredible stressor on the body and the bottom number is more closely associated with the water retention in the body is 
associated with the inflammatory foods people are eating or different drugs that you're taking. So I think that we can get the bottom number down. I was tickled with that though. Um, she's a blood type O, so the sugars will be particularly harmful for her sleep. At the beginning, she would go to bed at midnight, which already took her three hours to fall asleep. And she would wake five times for urination in four hours of sleep. So a little more than hourly. And it would take her about five minutes to get back to sleep. After we started the herbs, acupuncture, and magnesium lotion, she would feel sleepy and lie down at 8 and fall asleep by 11, which is still 8, 9, 10, 11, 3 hours to fall asleep, but at least it's an hour earlier, which is closer to Chinese medicine. Um, ideal time to go to sleep is 10 p.m. And then she would sleep for the first time she reported. It was one night she had two hour intervals, and the other nights it was 11, 12, 1, 30, two and a half hours for the first interval, and then hourly after that until 6 a.m. So 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that was seven hours. And this week she is still getting six to seven hours and then mostly at two hour intervals to wake. So that's a significant improvement for her overall condition just because she's sleeping longer, four hours versus six, seven, and one hour or less intervals up to two hour intervals. So less disruption and longer hours, which is very excellent for such a short amount of time for treatment. Um, another big concern for everyone, but definitely for her will be her bowel movement, which was every other day. And now after she started our diet, it went to brown, daily formed, but she was having headaches with the herbs at the beginning. And that's because the herbs were hydrating and a little circulating. And sometimes at the beginning that makes people feel a little headachey. This, today she reported no headaches on the herbs anymore, which was excellent because now she has sufficiently moisturize herself to the point that the circulation is okay and not causing her headaches. So she was taking more painkillers for headaches and on top of her painkillers that she takes for neuropathy, which was only an aproxen, not a strong narcotic at least, but still that was causing her to lose her appetite even more. So with less food, then she wasn't feeling quite completely eliminated. Then this week we figured out that her bowel movement was going and then she skipped a day and then it came back pebbles and this skip a day was caused by taking Senna with Benaproxen. I understand that if you take other narcotic painkillers like hydrocortone, that definitely comes with some extreme constipation or pebbles or not going or pain. So I don't find that Naproxen has that side effect. So I advise her to take it without the Senna and see if she doesn't get constipated. But I think that the Senna itself is just so, it has such a strong laxative effect and it's very bad to use on a regular basis. So I think that that dried her and that's why she skipped the second day. So I'm hopeful that she'll go back to the daily formed as soon as we take out the irritant, which I hope is just the Senna. And so her bowel movement was beautiful and I think it will go back to beautiful. And then her tongue in the beginning was beautiful and pink and thin white coating with underneath the veins were not stagnant and very skinny normal, which is a beautiful tongue for a cancer patient, I must say. And then after her first formula, which was Nu Zenzi 10 grams, Han Lian Cao 15, Xuan San 5, Yu Jin 5, then her, her warm, let's see, her warm slippery pulses calmed down and her, 
liver pulse that I couldn't ever tell what it really was because it was either slippery and overactive from the spicy or slippery and overactive from the dairy. So I never got a chance to see it at its weakest, but I'm sure if I had taken away the spicy and the dairy and they had an overactive pulse, it would have been very weak, especially with her condition. So today I got a 35% out of her liver, which is very close to past, only 50. And last week I did see the force for the trees on her kidney, which was a zero, almost zero. And today um, I got a 25%. I come back to why that was Im improved. So on the first formula, her sleep improved and um, I think the food was responsible for her bowel movement improving. And then um, we got the liver to 35%, but the kidney was still almost zero along with the heart. And so I add, she tested for Lu Jiao Shuang 5 grams and Shi Jin Tuan 10 grams. And then um, that's why I got the 25% out, out of her kidney today. So I was super tickled. We just need 25% um, more out of the kidney. And I'm quite hopeful that if we're not drying her with the laxative effects of the Senna, that we will not harm the kidney yin and maybe it'll just come up by itself. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, her other pulse, her lung pulse, has been at zero for each appointment. I know that's partly due to her condition from the cancer, but um, I know it's also partially due to the adrenal fatigue because this condition is just very stressful on the body and then they put chemotherapy on it, which is even more stressful, plus all her side effects and the pain. So I think that I have a good chance of getting her lung up, especially since her liver and kidney are making such lovely progress and her sleep. As you know, we need to regenerate with the sleep. Her stomach pulse started out so 25% uh, and then it was overactive. So these past two times without the spicy and the dairy and the wheat and the sugar, uh, mostly, then her stomach pulses has, has been a lovely pass. Her large intestine is 25%. I still think that's because of the dry effects of the Senna. So I'm hopeful that that will also make a lovely comeback. Her acupuncture points, I did Naekwon, Naekwon and Shenmen, and I did Tai Tong on the liver meridian, and Zhu Ling Chi on the gallbladder meridian, Jie Shi on the stomach meridian, Chiu Shu on the gallbladder meridian, Zhong Feng on the liver meridian, and Rangu on the kidney meridian, all on the feet and the ankles, or the wrists. And her pulses were beautifully balanced. Her lung pulse comes back up each time with this magical combination of needles. And I'm hopeful that we continue the magnesium lotion and this current formula because she did not test for more herbs this time, but hopefully with time she'll be able to handle more of them because I definitely need to get more in for her other symptoms. But the exciting thing that we started today was the alpha stem to help rejuvenate her liver and kidney and get her a deeper sleep and to hopefully, possibly um, work on the pain a little bit. And we started her off, she only tested for level half, so 0 0.5 for 10 minutes. And I find that if I test patients and ease them into it, it they get better results and they don't have any undesirable side effects. So if she doesn't feel anything at the 0.5 for 10 minutes, that's better than feeling something unpleasant. And then I will try twice a week for the alpha stim and once a week for the acupuncture and I will test her and we will see her results because I'm seeing that the people who are in severe adrenal fatigue are after I get a certain number of treatments or a certain level they go home and they pass out and they sleep for several hours one girl took a one hour nap another lady took a four hour nap another lady took a six hour nap and that's just the body saying okay I'm gonna relax and then I'm going to go into a deep restorative regenerative sleep mode for a while and that will be like hours and hours and hours and days and days worth of sleep in a small amount of time if we can get them into that super super deep restorative sleep 
and that will be excellent for her liver and her kidney and all of her other symptoms. So we see how she responds to alpha stim and like I said, maybe not every single week, but after I get some exciting things to share, then I will update you because I really just want her to feel wonderful and feel better. And our goal will be to ease her through whatever um, treatment plans her doctor wants to prescribe to her. And of course, my ultimate goal will be to help the cancer, um, if possible, go into remission. That would be my wish for her because she's such a lovely lady and I really want to help her. I will update you as soon as I can. And we did cupping for her whole back. And then um, until next time, thank you for watching and aloha.